I'm scared in my own apartment. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm scared 24 hours a day, but not necessarily in New York. Uh, I actually feel pretty comfortable in New York. I get scared like in Sweden. You've been living this shit all over town anymore. I'm not people, I'm just me, and I do whatever I got and want to do, got it? See that upstairs room, the one above the office? It's hell of a mess. I mean, it looks like they've been throwing junk in there for 20 years. It used to be cleaned up. What you are? I'm not broken out. It's going right, right? You know, it's about quarter past two now. My wife's going to pick me up around about 5.30. So I give you about three hours. But you can't finish today, you can finish up tomorrow. And is there a benefits package or are you hiring on a freelance basis? Okay. Here we go. <sighs> the words of the famous poet. Billy Shakespeare. I call you. Yeah. To no, me, I think we're gonna work on a freelance basis here. That is the question. Jimmy, lock the door. Look at what's going on. Well, Ogie. Yeah. I am. Okay? So that is that. Come here. Because I'm going to make love to you. And I'm going to ride you like a big bull. I was <laughs> Look, you never take anything serious, do you? <laughs> I try not to anyway. It's better for your health. Support. I mean, look at you, Vincent. You're the guy with the wife and the three kids at the ranch house on Long Island. You're the guy with the with, with the white shoes and the white caddy and the white chair carpet. But you've had two heart attacks, and I'm still waiting for my first. <laughs> And he 
he's my best opponent because the score is always tied. And if you, we don't fight at home because we fight on the courts. And I'm talking about drop dead fights. I won't give. I'll die. I'll fall down on that court before I give him a point. And then he tries to harass me. On you know, he said, oh, and now he said I'm going to get serious. And every time he does that, I. Kick him. Who is it? Who is it? Dropped? <laughs> Sally? Oh, I know. I know. It's the little waitress with the big fat culo, isn't it? Give him more than I deserve. Give him more than I deserve. Give him more than I deserve. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Smack into me. And the creeper recognizes me. 
And I know he knows that I recognize him. The guy from the check cashing place hadn't run out then screaming bloody murder. He would have shot me. I'm telling you, the creeper would have shot me right there on the sidewalk. But the noise distracted him. And when he turned around to see what was going on, I took off. One more second and I would have been dead. The man has sweat. Shut up! I don't think they're likely to forgive me if I testify again. It's not fair. It's all for you. Then hang on to it. I put my life at risk to catch that kid. Well, I have a right to forget somebody and not be caught for it. You got a response? Excuse me, sweetheart. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Don't talk to me like that. You got a responsibility to teach that kid. The right finger in my face. You have no right. Oh, lady, 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 lady. What is this? You got a responsibility to teach this kid right from wrong. No, and you just saw right from wrong. That was right from wrong. Well, you just, you just rewarded him. You know what you taught him? Nelly. How'd you get the name from Nelly? I'm from Italy. From Italy. My father's Italian. My mother's black. You ain't you know no Who's that, man? Mulatto? You ain't no mulatto. You black as me, man. How do you know? Wait, wait, wait. How do you know what I am? I'm one with your own life. I tell you this, black man. You're a suit. I tell you this, black man. No, no, wait a minute. I tell you this, my brother. Wait, wait. My brother, my brother, Finelli. I tell you this. Get real with me. Talk to me. Your baby, the baby you're carrying around inside that body. I got it for you. You know, man, I'm so ready. Stop trying to stop me. What are you talking about? I'm trying to tell you why I'm really a rat. An abortion is stupid. I had an abortion the day before yesterday. There's no baby in there. You don't have to talk to me about that shit anymore. Bye bye, baby. About 25 years ago, there was a young girl who was skiing alone. This guy did once. Yeah, that's right. There we go. There was an avalanche. The snow swirled in his body. Yeah. Yeah. Not some spuzzy dickhead you pick in the last month's garbage. You hear what I'm saying? He'll chop Mr. Dad here into little pieces. That's a problem. Well, it's just a little boy. But the year is And he grew up to be a scared too. One day, last winter, he went to the ball. Run out of cold pads? Looks like a bad couple of them. Yeah, yeah. Well, as soon as I'm going to go up to the upper or anything. Yeah, I did. Yeah. 
Unless they ask me how it's going to take pictures. Well, this is the story of how I got my first camera. As a matter of fact, it's the only camera I've ever had. Are you following me so far? Every word. So, this is the story of how it happened. Okay. It was the summer of 76, back when I first started working for Vinny. The summer of Bicentennial. The kid came in one morning and started stealing things from the store. He's standing by the rack of paper bags along the far wall and he's stuffing skin magazines under his shirt. I didn't see him at first because he was crowded around the counter. But once I noticed what he was up to, I started to shout. He took off like a jackrabbit. And by the time I got out from behind the counter, he was already tearing ass down 7th Avenue. I chased him about half a block. Then I gave up. He dropped something along the way. And since I didn't feel like running anymore, I bent down to see what it was. It turned out to be his wallet. There wasn't any money inside, but his driver's license was there, along with three or four snapshots. Suppose I could have called the cops and had to make them feel I keep waiting for the next novel to come out. Anything in the works? No, I mean, it's coming along. Actually, at the rate it's going, we'll have a story finished by the end of the summer. Wonderful. Uh, I apologize for springing this on you at the last minute, but Mr. Benjamin and I are attending a celebration tonight, and we would be most pleased if you chose to accompany us. Isn't that right, Mr. Benjamin? I just didn't have the heart. A poor kid from Brooklyn. Without much going for him. Yes. He cared about a couple of dirty magazines anyway. So, they held on to the wallet. Okay. And how much? Um, every once in a while, I get a little urge to send it back to him, but I kept delaying. I never did anything about it. Then Christmas rolls around. Um, I'm stuck with nothing to do. Mr. Benjamin and myself. Vinny was going to invite me over, but his mother got sick, and he and his wife had to go down to Miami at the last minute. A little awkward. Has the price gone? Yeah, three's a crowd. Yes, I'm aware of that. But I have to keep an, an eye on Mr. Benjamin wherever he goes. Make sure he doesn't get himself into any trouble. Uh-huh. And what are you, the chaperone? Uh, and his father. <laughs> Most people assume that I'm his father, and it's a logical assumption as long as I'm older than he is. And so on. But the fact is that the, the verse is true. He's my father. Anyway, I finally got to the building I was looking for, the apartment I was looking for, and I ring the bell. Nothing happens. I assume no one's there. I ring again just to make sure. And just as I'm about to give up, I wait a little longer. I hear someone shuffling to the door. An old woman's voice asks, who's there? And I say, I'm looking for Roger Goodwin. Is that you, Roger? She says. And then she undoes about 15 locks and opens the door. She's got to be at least 80, maybe 90 years old. And the first thing I noticed about her is she's blind. I knew you'd all want to be white. Come on, man. You wouldn't forget that. Whatever that is, you don't need to do that. Where are you? This guy is good. Where are you from? He is no Best stock. He's nowhere. He's going to snap. I'm from Africa, but it takes me to remember this. I'm going to look around and say, black man, what now? You got a best guy. I stole you from Africa? Yeah. Can I give you back? That's right, Granny Ethel. I said, I came back to see you on Christmas. Don't ask me why I said it. I don't have any idea. It just came out that way. Suddenly, this old lady's hugging me there in front of the door, and I'm hugging her back. It was as if we both decided to play this game without having to discuss the rules. I mean, she knew I wasn't a grandson. She was old and dotty, but she wasn't so far gone that she couldn't tell a complete stranger from her own flesh and blood. But it made her happy to pretend. I said, I got better to do. I was happy to go over here. So, most kids just run her off. It's not a baby anymore. It's her life. And she doesn't do her own business. Well, she's just a kid. It's time for more babies later after she grows up. God, well, come on. Where did she go? She's not going to make it next to your birthday. Not if you got her into one of those. We have programs. Yeah, I don't know if you 